I'm Red Amaya. And I'm Stephanie Wong, here with Amit Zaveri, VP of Engineering, to dive into APIs. Welcome and thanks for joining us. Sure, thanks for having me. So I want to talk about APIs, which have come a long way from the software interfaces popularized by Win32 APIs. Tell us where they are today and your predictions for APIs in 2019 and where AP Apigee lies in this space. Sure, sure. I think if you look at what's going on in the industry today, there are many things which are driving the modernization of a lot of the existing applications, right? So APIs are becoming the front end to a lot of the assets companies have already in their portfolio and they unlock a lot of those content for different kind of users, be it end users, be it partners, as well as employees. So I think if you look at going forward in 2019, you'll start seeing a lot of different ways of exposing those APIs. One, a lot of companies are using, trying to monetize on them to be able to kind of use that to create a lot of new content as well as partnerships. Uh, so we have a lot of good examples of customers like say Magazine Luisa in Brazil who is trying to create a lot of e-commerce kind of content and be able to expose a lot of data to the end users to buy it. Same thing with AccuWeather, where they want to be able to now take a lot of the weather data and share it and bring it, make it available to a lot of other end users as well. So that's one kind of driving factor. Second thing is popularization of a lot of uh, ways of interfacing through voice and text. So you see bots, you see, of course, uh, a different kind of consumer devices. And that requires a lot of uh, interfaces into the backend systems and be able to expose it through voice and text. So that's also driving a lot of interest from uh, uh, companies to be able to use API management for that. And third area we've seen a lot of uh, kind of driving factor, and you'll see a lot of it as we move forward, is a lot of industry requirements. Right? So there are a lot of open standards coming out, a lot of re regulations coming out. And APIs is the one way to kind of lock the content and make sure they're secured and they are available to the right people. So that's another uh, complete uh, new requirement we're seeing uh, and becoming very popular uh, as we move forward. That's exciting. Now, obviously, a lot of APIs that drive ecosystems are publicly visible, uh, but many of the APIs at any given company are only used internally. How does Apigee support both of those use cases? Sure. So I think the, the way we have built our platform at, uh, at, uh, in the Apigee area was to really make sure that anybody who wants to expose APIs, we provide them ways to kind of manage the whole process, be it internal or external users. Uh, and so the platform is really kind of agnostic of that fact, but we of course pro provide a lot of safeguarding when it's externally exposed. A lot of the right kind of regulations, the right kind of permissions, security elements are built in. Similarly inside, when you're trying to expose it inside the enterprise and be able to use it between different employees for different application development, again, we provide the whole lifecycle management for it. So there are a lot of, again, capabilities for a developer to use and uh, leverage when they're building those applications. And they can decide the roles and how and what that will be shared and a lot of features kind of build in to really make that happen. And a lot of companies are now looking towards microservices, but microservices will continue to have a lot of different recipes. Successful microservice architecture is complex to design, build, and manage, and there are a lot of experimentation going on, but the key is to build reusable, decoupled services that can scale with the right levels of governance. How is Apigee helping to support microservice architecture? Yeah, I think general, uh, if you look at the architecture evolution in general, is idea is to really have these small, small kind of services and kind of decoupled in a way. Right? And then the best way to kind of use those services is through an API. So what, what Apigee does is now that we have interfaces to kind of a lot of the microservices management layer. And for example, Istio, which uh, Google provides as a service, uh, allows you to now expose those microservices, manage them in a much better way, and orchestrate and kind of uh, we do a lot of monitoring around it. And what we do with Apigee is we integrate with Istio and really provide the ability to manage those APIs through one of those one, one way. Otherwise, if you have other microservices, you have an API, we can, of course, manage that lifecycle for that and allow you to use those microservices in a much better fashion than a monolithic application would be. Nice. And can you talk a little bit about the new general availability release of Apigee Edge for private cloud? Yeah, I think uh, the, way, the way we are looking at Apigee in general is to have a deployment model which is flexible. Right? So one is to be able to, of course, you can continue using it on-prem. Second thing is to be able to now take it in the cloud. We have an uh, Apigee Edge product which is available in the cloud as well, fully managed by uh, Google. Uh, third is this hybrid me mechanism where you can have some of the runtime running uh, anywhere you choose, be it a private cloud or on-premise. Uh, it can be running on Kubernetes or GKE. And the, run and the control plane is running in the cloud. And it could, that could be in any, any cloud, could be a Google or any third party cloud as well. So we try to make sure the architecture is very flexible, giving choices to the customers and developers to really deploy the way they would want to. And specifically with Edge, we do provide a private cloud edition where you can run on GKE 
and GKE on-premise can be available anywhere a developer wants to choose to deploy it, and we allow you to kind of have it very easy and uh, easy to manage and easy to deploy. So we, that's available today, and we continue to kind of make progress in that area. It's exciting. So we know that APIs and building APIs isn't just enough. You have to actually convince your developers to use them. And that means developer portals become key. How does uh, Apogee's developer portal and its enhancements help that happen? Yeah, I think to tie everything together, you have to have a, have a structure where this information can be available. Right? So the developers, of course, would love to have one way of, in terms of how you manage those APIs. But how do you expose it is through a developer portal. So Apogee provides a lot of capabilities on the developer portal side. So we have a customer-facing portal, a partner-facing portal, all the lifecycle for kind of getting your APIs into the portal as well, all the services are available. So developer doesn't have to do a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of how to share that content, how to kind of get the uh, right kind of security around it. Uh, so the developer portal today uh, is available through all of our products, and we keep on making enhancements to it. There's one uh, offering through Drupal as well through a third-party CMS if a customer chooses to use a heavy-duty portal and has a lot more capabilities for a lot of uh, specific things, custom work you might want to do. But we also have an integrated portal as part of our offering today, which is very simple, easy to use, and you can create uh, a lot of interface, inter portal interfaces for end users very quickly and easily. That's great. Now, Apogee is built on best practice to help create world-class developer experiences. Right? So tell me a little bit, about, a little bit more about that. I think in general, I think uh, just not Apogee, if you look at Google, we've been trying to make sure with the Google Cloud, make developer experience very friendly, right? And I think one of the key things for developer is the life cycle of uh, how do you create an application and deliver that. And uh, the one big part of that is the API management for it in terms of the whole life cycle. And so we have made sure for developer, it's very easy to onboard. They can start writing an API, they can start kind of documenting it, testing it, and, uh, and design and delivering it. So we provide a lot of tooling for that, very simple, easy to use. Uh, and uh, what we've been doing beyond that is really how now kind of giving you metering, monitoring, monetization. So now you have an idea of who's using what, uh, what kind of security you have, what kind of privileges were uh, provided to that user, as well as what kind of usage you got out of it, and how much money you can make out of it. So you have a lot of that data available to your finger trips. So we've been doing a lot of work to really add a lot of this value add beyond just being able to build an API and deliver it, but also all the things you need around monitoring, metering, uh, security, monetization. Uh, so that's really becoming a very powerful element in terms of feature capabilities for developers and anybody else who want to do this work. Thank you so much, Amit. We packed a lot of info into our talk, so thanks for your time. Oh, thanks for having me.